This is episode 27 of the Book of Mormon Scripture Challenge. Today, we're going to look at contradictions in Moroni. For the last dozen videos, I have focused on the teachings of grace in the Book of Mormon. I have shown that both the Bible and the Book of Mormon support this teaching. Now, some of you may wonder why there are so many ways grace is taught, or why there could be any confusion with such clear teachings. Undoubtedly, you are probably aware of teachers in the church that teach grace just as passionately such as BYU professor Brad Wilcox. However, there is good reason for that confusion, and today we will look at it. Right before Mormon dies, he writes letters to his son Moroni. In Moroni chapter 8, we find a verse that seems to contradict the teachings of grace that fill the Book of Mormon. If you have not read the chapter, feel free to pause the video and do so now. In Moroni chapter 8, verse 25, it says, And the fruits of repentance is baptism. And baptism cometh by faith unto the fulfilling of the commandments. And the fulfilling of the commandments bringeth remission of sins. The fact that that statement is made is bewildering because it comes right after arguments for the atonement. And he that saith that little children need baptism denieth the mercies of Christ and setteth that not the atonement of him and the power of his redemption. But it is mockery before God, denying the mercies of Christ and the power of his Holy Spirit, and putteth trust in dead works. First, let us remember how Christ sat with the children and invited them to sit with him. He taught his disciples that of such is the kingdom of heaven. Are kids perfect? Do you have kids? They are saved through the grace of Christ, not works. They are not able to keep the commandments perfectly, and that debt is canceled through the mercy of Christ. Now, the next verse can help us with close comparison of Scripture. Behold, my son, this thing ought not to be. For repentance is unto them that are under condemnation and under the curse of a broken law. Let's now look at Galatians chapter 3. Feel free to pause the video and read the whole chapter. We'll start in verse 10, which says, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So, in other words, if you are going to live by the law, you need to follow all the law or be condemned by it. Let's continue in 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. So we are justified by faith, not works. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Christ himself sank below us all, having obeyed the law perfectly still became a curse for our sake. In 18 it says, For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. So if you earn something, it is not a gift. Continuing, Wherefore, then, serveth the law. It was added because of the transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of the mediator. So the law was added un until Christ should come to teach us righteousness. As it says in 21, is the law then against the promises of God? 
God forbid. If there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. So the law was not given for remission of sins. Before Christ came, a type was given through sacrifice to teach us that a remission came through the shedding of blood. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept shut up unto the faith which should afterward be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster, that bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. The law was not given for a remission of sins. Before Christ came, the law and animal sacrifice were given to teach that a remission came through the shedding of blood, the blood of a mediator. Let's look again at Moroni chapter 8, starting in verse 24. Behold, my son, this thing ought not to be, for repentance is unto them that are under condemnation and under the curse of a broken law. If you have faith in Christ, you are not under the curse of a broken law. And the first fruits of repentance is baptism, and baptism cometh by faith unto the fulfilling of the commandments, and the fulfilling of the commandments bringeth a remission of sins. When we repent and turn to Christ and have faith in Him, the first thing that we desire to do is be baptized. We also will have a desire to follow the commandments because we love God. For as many of you as have been baptized unto Christ have put on Christ. But the fulfilling of the law that bringeth the remission of sins was only done by one man, and that man is Christ Jesus. We can never fulfill the commandments in any light that would merit a remission of sins. If we use these verses to suggest that by our obedience we are remitting sins, then we are denying the need of Christ and His grace. It is good for us to keep the commandments and follow the laws, but sins can only be remitted by Christ's atoning blood, for He hath fulfilled the commandments of God to bring a remission of sins for all man. If you have noticed any sections of the Book of Mormon or the Bible that you would like me to take a closer look at, please email me at brother3tyler at gmail.com. Also, please check out the website for extra materials for scripture study and what's new in the videos. Until next time.